Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, whenever you are tuning into this. Hi, I'm Catherine Oster. Welcome to this week's edition of Coffee Chat, where I'd really like to get into the conversation around bodies and what makes them strong, not wrong. And if you checked out last week, I also talked about strong, not wrong, and how when we make things wrong and try to change from the judgment that something is wrong, hi, Karen, good morning, um, that doesn't work so well. Hey, mom, good morning. That really, really gets you stuck in the yuck and the pain and the judgment. Good morning, Robert. So, oh man, so, Every morning, every morning before I do coffee chat, I'm always like, what are we going to chat about this morning? And I used to kind of make it a thing where I would try to figure out the right thing. What, what's the right topic to chat about today? And now I just kind of will like sit with that energy of the question. What is coffee chat going to be about? And when I asked that, what really popped was bodies and and what what I've been invited to be with my body over the last decade or so, I also had a really, really delicious piece of cheesecake yesterday <laughs> that was like so orgasmic. And then I realized if I didn't have a body, I wouldn't have been able to taste or enjoy this cheesecake like I am right now. Like it was so good. It was like a chocolate cheesecake. It was like a Black Forest cheesecake. Cherries on top, chocolate cheesecake, so good. <laughs> um, so right from the very beginning, so I'm just gonna talk about my experience <clears throat> with, bod with my body. Um, right from the very beginning, I felt my body was wrong. It was wrong for everything that it was. It was wrong because it was wrong. Bodies were in where I grew up, how I grew up. And it wasn't any, like my parents weren't always perpetrating that on me. It was just kind of the general energy that I picked up on. Um, what I learned about bodies back then was that they were just so wrong. Hi, Nicole. They were wrong because they were wrong. They were the wrong shape. They were the wrong size. It was wrong when you, when you enjoyed your body. That was, that was wrong. Um, your body was wrong because it was in pain. There's something wrong with it. Like so much wrongness with bodies. And one of the things that access consciousness and these tools, <clears throat> asking these questions has really invited me to look at with my body is what's right about this body that I'm not getting and really start to get into questions to get clarity of the energy. You know, when you're feeling some pain in your body, well, how does your body communicate with you? Um, what is it telling me? What if pain is a communication? What if it doesn't mean that something's wrong? And I mean, it could be, it could be your body could require something. It could require, you know, a massage, a chiropractor, a doctor. Um, but what is your body telling you? What is your body communicating to you? Um, yeah. And so really cultivating being with my body in a different way over the last 10 years. And now I wake up like every morning, I'm so grateful for my body. Hi, Lynn. And, and what this has also given me is like, if you haven't noticed every single body is just a little bit different. It responds just a little bit differently to things than others do. There can be things going on with your body. I would totally, yeah, coffee cheers. You know what I did with my coffee this morning? I forgot to make it. Like I had it all set up, ready to go. And <laughs> I just had to push the button. I forgot to push the button. So I went to grab my cup of coffee. I'm like, there's no coffee. And so it's making right now. So I'm gonna grab it after this. So there's coffee chat with no coffee. What the heck? Hello, Sherry Lynn. 
Um, every body is a little bit different. Bodies cannot really be treated in like what works for one body does not work for another body. So it becomes so and then you're made wrong for that. And then like your body is wrong because it's not responding or not um, having the same effect as other as majority of bodies. So then your body's wrong. Like everything that is, we're just gonna pock and pot all of that. Because again, we're going back to the wrongness of bodies. Um, so it becomes this discovery of energetically, your body speaks the language of energy. Energetically communing with your body and trusting that. Even when it goes against what is normal and standard. Um, and your body will give you feedback possibly of how it's working so where was i going so okay so what works for one body might not work for another body um and your body's not wrong and what if you could just keep keep trying things keep trying something different you know it's really interesting i see some people who have some health stuff come up where traditional medicine doesn't work for them. And they will have literally spent a year or years seeing um, doctors, Western medicine, to try to correct some things that's going on with their body, and it doesn't work. And then these people, they'll just start looking outside of the box, which then they come across other things like um, acupuncture, Reiki, energy, um, one of the things that I've, that I have worked with my daughter, Helena, so she had trouble sleeping at nighttime. She has some anxiety and things like that. And so not like, it's not to an extremely debilitating degree, but it's starting. She's 10, you know, it probably started a few years ago when she was seven or eight. Um, and rather than, so I would run her bars, I would do the things that I knew to do, and it would provide her with some sense of space and relaxation, but it wasn't anything that really stuck. And what what the conversation led to, I just started talking to another facilitator. You've probably seen me and Mary Case, we do some classes together. Started chatting with Mary about Helena. Hi, Colleen! And what's going on with her body? And Mary invited me to look at going to a naturopath and looking at the organics of the body. You know, does it require some, um, like, are the amino acids balanced? And how is her iron levels and things like that? And I'm like, well, that's really interesting. Let's try that. And so this spring, maybe it was in the summer, we had an, an appointment with a naturopath and um, we got some blood testing done. And sure enough, her iron level was really low, so is her vitamin D, and that has a huge effect on how the brain um, functions, how it can handle the environment, how it feels. He also started her on some omega-3 supplements and some um, omega-3s. What is the... She's on a few different things a day, just supplements for her body, organic supplements, and... It took a few months for her to really notice. In the beginning, she didn't really perceive much difference, but it's October now, and I actually asked her like about a month ago, like, how are you doing with all these things? And she's like, Mom, I feel so good. And she's like, I feel like she doesn't have any more trouble falling asleep at nighttime. She gets a really good rest. And I'm just so grateful that... Um, I have been, you know, that these tools came along in my life so I can also empower her. Like her body's not wrong because your body, if your body can't fall asleep at nighttime, it's not wrong. And if it's affecting you, because there could also be some bodies that require less sleep. You know, we kind of think, well, if we're going off the norm and our body isn't sleeping eight to 10 hours, there's got to be something wrong with me. What if your body only requires that much sleep, but it can be, if it's possibly affecting you, then yeah, look at it. You know, instead of making it wrong, it's like, okay, what does my body require to support? Then you have to start going, trying different things, having conversations. Now, 
I know that there's so many things you can try that might be seem like it's a waste like because you but what I have discovered with my body or with Helena's body say I will ask the body to show me like body show me what you require to change this and I will literally like bump into somebody where we're talking about something and I'll be like, oh my God, that, I want to try that, you know, and all of a sudden this energy, this topic will just grab my attention. That's how my body will typically communicate with me. It will show me in that way. And so anyway, so we've got Helena. Now her levels are balanced and she has a way easier time falling asleep at nighttime. She can focus on her schoolwork so much better. Um, and she's just more like more present and relaxed. And I actually didn't notice in the moment when, when she started telling me she wasn't feeling well, I didn't notice that there was anything wrong with her per se, but now I can sense the difference. And I'm so glad that she told me what was going on. Um, and we started exploring this. And so the organics of your body, there could just be something like that that's just a little bit out that if you look at and get balanced again can create a huge thing. The other thing is movement. Um, I have been doing Pilates for almost a year now. Hello, Stephanie. She's my Pilates instructor, my Pilates coach. It'll be almost a year now. And I know I've talked about this before, but God, I feel so good. And Stephanie has introduced me to a whole new knowing about my body, I had no idea my feet could get so strong. <laughs> or I had no idea my inner thighs could do what they do. And my hamstrings and like, you know, these core muscles that your bra strap muscles, we call them, um, how effective they can be. Like I had no idea about my body in that way to the degree that I've learned about it in the last year. And it hasn't been hard. Like it's actually been fun. Now the workouts are hard, but I'm like, but they're not, it's so funny because they're hard, but they're not hard. Um, it's so rewarding and, um, and it's not like force. It's like, it's, and it's like deep work. Like, like it's so cool. And I, and I never would have imagined the presence and the strength that I could have cultivated, that I have cultivated with my body in the last year doing Pilates with Stephanie um, has been huge. And so, <laughs> so Stephanie lives in Lloydminster and, and operates her business in Lloydminster and she also offers online. And her Pilates business is called Live to Thrive Pilates. And I will put a link to her page here um, because if you are looking at creating something different with your body in terms of vitality and strength and getting to know your body in a different way. And Stephanie is this presence of allowance and kindness and nurturing. And she is so aware with bodies. Um, it's amazing. And I think that's what makes Pilates with her so unique. So she's already really busy, but I will put her information here for you if you would ever want to reach out to her. Um, it's brilliant. And another kudos thing is I've got a lesson client. She's close to 70. Um, and she's been taking lessons with me. God, it's probably been five years now, I bet. The last year she has been doing Pilates with Stephanie. Her riding has, she's achieving the goals that she has set for herself. Her riding has strengthened so much. She feels so much stronger in her body. What she can do on and with her horse now is amazing. And that's one of the reasons initially that I was attracted to Pilates because I wanted to improve my my riding in the saddle. I'm like, Catherine, if you're going to be a Grand Prix dressage rider lady, we got to like, we got to like, what else can I choose, be doing to ch actually choose that? You're welcome, Steph. Um... And so, yeah, so you, there's these side effects. The other thing is my body has not hurt for the whole year. There'll be things, like a few things here and there, but but the Pilates practice has <clears throat> strengthened my connection to my body so much that I catch these things way quicker 
and then I can take action on them sooner. So I'll go to the Cairo, I'll get my massage way quicker. Whereas before, I didn't have the communion or the connection with my body that, that I do now. So I would miss it. I wouldn't notice it as soon. So then it would get to the degree everywhere it was very painful <clears throat> before I would take action. And oftentimes it's just because my body was out of balance and I was using it incorrectly or not in a way that was balanced. So, so amazing. So what gift is your body? And what can you start choosing um, if you would like to, to strengthen it, to cultivate this communion with it, to connect with it, to enjoy your body? Whatever that is for you, ask your body to show you and it will. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me live this morning. I will see you later. Have an amazing day. I'm going to go get my coffee now. <laughs> coffee after coffee chat. Bye-bye. <laughs>